Well, the next uh, question has to do with Easter. Yes. Um, I was surprised and disappointed by the fact that my church, the Greek Orthodox yes. Church, and the Catholic Church yes. did not defy the government's orders. They didn't say Easter Mass is more important. We're yes. celebrating the one miracle that yes. defined us yes. as Christians. Yes. We have brothers in, in Muslim countries that list their lives yes. to, to, to go to Mass. To go day. to yeah. Mass. Yeah. I come from a communist country. The Greek Orthodox were allowed to go to church. Yes. But there were the Pentecostals and the yeah. Baptists that would have to meet secretly. Uh, yeah. secretly. Yeah. And so we were afraid of fines, <coughs> of contracting the disease, and maybe dying. I, I have a hard time yes. understanding the decisions of yes. both churches. Yes. I, I want to bring this back to something I said earlier in the interview, and that is the premise that, that not only public authorities, civil authorities were working on, but even ecclesiastical authorities was that the goods of the body are the greatest goods. This was the real problem with the response. If health is the greatest good for man, then you could justify the closing down of Easter or something. But the great irony was this. What do we celebrate at Easter? The resurrection of the body. We celebrate the fact that there's a life after this life, and this life is not all there is. <laughs> so we celebrate at Easter. And the great irony is that they should have restricted the celebration of that. It was basically the church as a whole saying, there is no resurrection on Easter Sunday. And I think it was a terrible mistake. I think it was a terrible mistake because of that. So let me say something here. Um, the truth of the matter is, at least in the Catholic Church, and I'm sure in the Orthodox Church they've had experience with this, there have been dozens of major plagues throughout the different places and times in the history of the Catholic Church. It is not like plagues is, you know, a plague is unknown to our faith and to the way we respond to it and the way that, that um, worship is carried on during those times. And some of those plagues were so serious that, that this last thing was um, child's play compared to it. The black plague At least 60 percent of the people in Europe. Yes. 60 percent. Yes. Not 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. That's right. Exactly. So we're talking about something that was that was very, very mild compared to that. Even in the most extreme plagues, the saints of the church say there were two things priests were bound to do. They were bound to baptize, and they were bound to give absolution so that people's souls would not be in a state of moral sin when they died. Right? They were bound to do that. Just like a police officer is bound to put his life, or a soldier is bound to put his life on the line to fight for his country or to defend someone who's helpless, and just like a fireman is bound to put his life on the line, even to, to save a burning building for crying out loud, much less people. Right? or a forest fire, or something like that, uh, all the more so, priests should be willing and bound by their, their obligations as priests to expose themselves to some danger for the sake of the spiritual good of the flock. So that was the first thing I would say. Um, now, it is true that early on, maybe people thought like, okay, this is about protecting the elderly and things like that, but... The truth of the matter is, what they ought to have done at the very beginning is they just should have said, your obligation to go to Mass is now lifted, and therefore let he who wants to go to Mass go. And he who does not want to go to Mass, don't go. And if you are caring for an elderly person back at home, we advise you not to make that risk for the sake of that elderly person. But we're going to let you make that free decision. Right? It's not up to the churches to... to decide for people when they should worship God and if they should worship God in that way. Huh? Um, I think the real reason that was behind the closures of the churches was the same reason that you brought up was behind the closure of that big corporation. That is, the leaders of the church, having recently been subject to a number of lawsuits because of the priest abuse scandal, were afraid of having new lawsuits initiated because of people claiming that they got sick at church and therefore um, the, the church um, is responsible financially for the effects of that. Do you, I, think, go ahead. do you think signing a waiver, saying, look, you will assume your risk, this is something that could happen? Yeah, or something like that. And, and to be honest, let's face it, there's something wrong with a court system that upholds this argument. Um, I'm a full-grown adult, and I knew there was a pandemic <laughs> going on. 
And I was told that I didn't have to go to church, but nevertheless, I went to church, and therefore, it's the church's fault. There's something wrong with the legal system that upholds that argument, right? So let's be, you know, just frank about it. Um, I think that the what they should have done is they should have an announcement at the beginning of Mass saying, you're here at your own risk, okay? Just realize that. You are fully informed now, and therefore, you know, you know what's the risk you're taking, and if you want to even risk your life to worship God, we're okay with that, if you're okay with that. I think that's what they should do. They should, at the beginning of each Mass, you're here at your own risk, and then at that point, just let people worship God. That's what I think should have been done. So I fully agree with yeah. what you're saying. Um, pretty much that uh, that takes care of the second question, which is, you know, there might be a second wave yeah. hitting us just yeah. about Christmas time. Sure, yeah. And so, what are, and you pretty much said it, but I would not mind if you repeated, this is something that I do as a math teacher, yeah. I repeat my message over and over. So, yeah. is this your solution for celebrating Christmas? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Tell the faithful, here are here's the risk you are taking. Yes. It is your decision. If you want to stay, it's your decision. And if you want to go, we will not mind and we will understand. Yes, absolutely. I think that's what we should do. Yeah. And um, and again, um, we know so much more about this disease now than we did before. And one of the things that I think is it's fairly clear now is that the um, rate of transmission for those who don't have symptoms is significantly lower. For those who do and so you say look if you're coughing don't come to mass fine you know it'll make everyone else on edge <laughs> if you're coughing and you know whatever at mass or whatever but if if you feel healthy and you want to take the risk then go ahead and take the risk i guess i would say something like that